Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for holding this hearing today and for focusing our attention on what is obviously a, a very hugely significant topic. Uh, I think it's been clear for a while now that we are far too reliant on China uh, for our domestic production, especially for essential products that we rely on. And of course, our medical supply chain is at the very top of that list, as we're sadly finding out. This is one of the reasons that I introduced legislation two weeks ago that would give the FDA more authority. Uh, to require that our medical product manufacturers report all the details of their supply chain, report where they are facing potential shortages, and then give the FDA new authority to speed potential replacements, uh, including, of course, replacements, ideally, that are made in this country. Ms. Gibson, can I just start with you? You stated in your testimony that we know China produces about 9 percent of our generic drugs, which is a lot. But can you – do you have any sense of, of – how many of our drugs involve Chinese production? In other words, maybe they're not made wholly there, but Chinese production's involved. Thousands. Thousands of our generic drugs and even some of the brand name products and perhaps even new therapies for coronavirus may depend on the chemicals uh, that are sourced primarily in China. And for the, if you're hospitalized with coronavirus, if you have a severe case, which thankfully is very rare, is small numbers of people, small percentage, you will need, you might be on a ventilator, so you'll need sedatives like fentanyl and propofol. Your blood pressure may get dangerously low, so you'll need pressors like dopamine or epinephrine. You might get a secondary infection, bacterial in nature, and you'll need antibiotics. You might become septic, which is life-threatening. I was sitting in a room with the people that actually make medicines. These are the men and women in pharmaceutical engineering, pharmaceutical chemistry. I said, so tell me, if you have to make these tomorrow, where do the core chemicals come from to make it? How much are we dependent on China? And they said 90 percent of the chemicals to make those basic generic drugs depend on China. The good news is that there is advanced manufacturing technology and really brilliant chemists right here in the United States that want to make it are capable of starting production tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And Civica RX, they've uh, committed to um, all their APIs being made in the outside of China. But they want to take the next step and make sure all the chemical components are not, we're not dependent on China. Advanced manufacturing technology, and the, we have brilliant people in this country. And they want to do it. So we can make, make a lot of these medicines here. They just need the investment to get started. It, it just strikes me, based on your testimony, which I think is really eye-opening, that we probably do not appreciate or have not appreciated until now the extent of our reliance, the true scale of the vulnerability Absolutely. in our medical supply chain. Dr. Anderson, let me ask you, in, in your view, what is the most helpful thing the federal government can do to support these small biotech companies that you've spoken about and that you write about? Uh, what are the right incentives that we ought to be proposing or adopting? Essentially, the, that they have a guaranteed place to sell their products. So right now, they are coming up with these great new ideas, and they don't always have a place to sell their products. And it's true mostly in, not in cancer, where there's a lot of profit in there, but in, in anti-infective, in antibiotics and things like that. You develop something new in that area, and the current system doesn't work. So that's why we have to create Civica RX, which is this thing that's run out of Intermountain Healthcare in Utah and other places. We just did not see that the marketplace was producing certain areas because the profitability was not high enough. Let me ask you something else I found interesting. You wrote in your testimony that while small biotech companies often make the initial discoveries, uh, during a vaccine or drug development process, it's the large pharma companies that then often buy them up Correct. and uh, gain ownership over the IP. I I'm wondering if that trend accelerates the offshoring of our capacity to, to China. Are those things related? Well, I think what we've seen now is, in fact, that's happening. So all of a sudden, you know, Pfizer has their major manufacturing plan in China. Mm -hmm. Um, so the big companies are looking where they can produce it the least expensively and are going there, especially in the generic, because it's all price-driven. 
Just, uh, Mr. Morrison, before I run out of time, I, I was reading your testimony. I was astounded to learn that you reiterated this fact. Actually, Ms. Gibson, you mentioned it too. That we stopped making penicillin domestically in this country in 2004, right? Um, yet the CDC says 62 million, 62 million penicillin prescriptions were filled in the United States in 2015. I've got two little boys at home. I think the Holly household accounted for a number of those uh, prescriptions. Um, just to, to make it clear here, is it correct to characterize the decision to move the production of penicillin overseas as an economic decision? It was economically driven. It was a, it was a profit-driven decision. Is that your understanding? Yes, sir. I think that the point of Made in China 2025 is essentially to destroy the free market and create incentives to offshore production in China. Um, and originally, this seemed like a good thing. We'll save prices. We'll move value where value can be moved. We'll continue to do the innovation. But China is scooping that up as well. Uh, and so without any decision by any government authority, this happened, and now we are going to deal with the consequences and of course, an antibiotic isn't instrumental to t treat a virus, but the respiratory infection, it is. Right. It just strikes me, as my last comment, Mr. Chairman, that uh, our current drug policy seems to privilege economic considerations of maybe a few companies over public health considerations. Is that fair to say, Mr. Morrison? I, I would largely agree, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.